Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Canal Recipes. Uh, so, I'm uh, Yves-Alexis Perez, I'm uh, working at the um, INSSI, which is the French Network and Information Security Agency, uh, where I'm running the hardware and software security lab, uh, and we focus mostly on platform security. Uh, and I'm also a Debian developer, where I'm a member of the security team, and I'm trying to maintain uh, an unofficial Linux GRSec package. Uh, so this talk is mostly about uh, stuff I'm doing in my spare time, which is providing hardened kernel in Debian for uh, everyone, everyone possible. Uh, uh, so it's Definitely a, a, a spare time project, but uh, obviously it's important also at work. Some context. Uh, I won't talk, well, I will introduce uh, features of the GR security patch, uh, but I'm not focusing on it. Uh, I'm somehow taking for granted that the features are uh, nice to have, uh, and I won't detail them too much. Uh, I'm mostly talking about generic kernel ordering and kernel security, uh, Debian distribution, uh, so, well, not too much because I guess it's a, it's a well-known distribution, but what I'm really uh, talking about is integrations of all this in something suitable for end users. Uh, talk about it uh, a bit later, and I will detail my current attempts uh, during the presentation. So first, uh, what do I mean by kernel security? Uh, as uh, Michael Skarisk uh, one, uh, once said to us in a, in a course, uh, the kernel knows everything. And what that uh, really means it is that the kernel in a, in, in a Linux box uh, knows everything which is running on it, uh, at least everything on top of the Linux kernel. I'm not talking uh, about virtualization, uh, SMM mode, or something like that. Uh, the kernel knows every bit of sensitive memory uh, or processes, uh, and it usually, uh, it usually runs in a privileged CPU mode, uh, like a ring zero uh, on x86. And it handles security for user space, uh, which means it, uh, it will handle uh, DAC or MAC, uh, and handle a lot of um, really sensitive data, uh, for example, uh, it will handle IPsec encryption, uh, disk encryption, it's, uh, Stuff like that. So basically, the kernel is the most critical component running on the box, uh, and it needs to be protected if we want it to, to do its job uh, correctly. But usually, when people talk about kernel security, uh, they mean just fixing bugs, uh, obviously, fixing security bugs, uh, which are usually privileged escalation bugs, uh, uh, quite often on Android. So we, uh, we heard a lot of uh, just fixing bugs, which uh, make, make it possible to uh, have a root on Android. Uh, but it's really a, a tiny part of kernel security. Uh, fixing security bugs is definitely important, but it's not enough. Uh, kernel needs to protect itself uh, against attackers, because there will always be more bugs. Uh, uh, there are bugs in your currently running kernel. It's, even if we don't know them, uh, we know there are. And your kernel might handle sensitive data. And so we want to protect even buggy kernels and find ways to protect your sensitive data, even if we don't already know the, the bugs. Obviously, fixing bugs and fixing cl uh, whole classes of bugs is still mandatory. So that's where kernel hardening uh, comes into play. Uh, what is kernel hardening? It's, it means uh, having some ways for the kernel to actively protect itself, um, even if, uh, against exploitation of unknown bugs. Uh, I don't. Uh, I won't say uh, some uh, some marketing term, uh, which like uh, it's an antivirus which will protect you from known and unknown viruses. It's not sing nothing like that, but it's basically a blocking. Uh, Blocking, blocking uh, exploits, uh, even if we know the, the kernel is buggy. Uh, what we really want to protect uh, is especially the kernel memory, 
uh, and uh, hardens barriers between uh, kernel land and user land because usually uh, attacks come from user land. Uh, there are other uh, other ways, but uh, it usually comes from user space. Uh, but it also means re uh, reducing the kernel attack surface, and there are few ways for that. So at that point, uh, when we talk about Linux security, um, most people uh, usually say, but we already have SLinux, Linux, or um, Apparmore, and just, uh, well, when we talk about kernel security, uh, people also mean, usually mean uh, a Mac, uh, which are indeed uh, security features, but usually uh, all those features are mostly focused uh, at user space. Uh, they're supposed to isolate users, to isolate uh, processes, resources, uh, which is definitely useful. We want to provide uh, security features to user space, but it's not enough to protect the kernel itself. So that's where, that's where GR security comes into play. Uh, there are other, um, other features, but I'm focusing on GR security. Uh, what is it, uh, quickly? It's a really large patch, uh, like six megabytes, uh, against the Linux kernel. Uh, it's, uh, it started more than 14 years ago uh, and pioneered multiple techniques uh, like uh, ASLR, which was uh, uh, invented by, uh, by PIPAX. Uh, and GR uh, security uh, actually includes multiple parts. Uh, one of the most known is uh, PAX, which is mostly protecting the kernel memory against uh, memory corruption bugs. Uh, there is a role-based access control, which is which looks a lot like a, a usual, well, a Mac. Uh, it's not implemented as an LSM, but it's a bit like the same thing. And there are other generic hardening features. Uh, if we focus uh, on PAX a little, uh, the most re relevant features it has for hardening, uh, there is no exec, uh, which is a software implementation of the NX bit, or a NX or execute no or whatever, uh, and it predates the, the hardware implementations. So uh, even before uh, we have non-executable uh, memory pages, uh, there was a way on PAX patched kernel uh, to have some memory pages or segments marked at, as an exec. And protect is a, a WXRX uh, uh, principle for memory at the page level. Basically, it prevents having, having memory pages available both as write and execute. Uh, the point is it prevents uh, exploitation in user land uh, using imported code. So you, uh, an attacker won't have any, any place to write and execute code. So either it has to uh, use things like a ROP or um, use already a written code, or you won't be able to execute it. Uh, can exec, it's uh, the kernel land equivalent of a no exec uh, plus and protect. Um, so the point is to prevent all injection and execution of foreign code into the kernel. So you have a, a really improved uh, barrier between uh, user land and, uh, and kernel land. Uh, so ASLR uh, predates the Linux versions and all versions. Uh, and it's, uh, even on the current, um, current, current uh, versions, it's, uh, it's still an improvement. Uh, UGRF is a, is a feature which prevents the kernel dereferencing any user land pointer uh, directly. So basically, it prevents uh, an attacker to provide code from user land to the kernel. Uh, and prevents uh, an exploit to use uh, code from user land. It's a bit like SMAP, SMAP or PXN and PAN on, on ARM uh, on Story. Basically, you, are, you just can't access code, uh, user land code uh, from, from the kernel unless, uh, well, you, you, you can never access, uh, access uh, code, well, memory page as uh, executable memory pages, uh, and you can access data pages uh, only when you open the kernel. So it's re it looks really like, like SMAT uh, at that point, because sometimes you need to access user land code, uh, for example, for uh, system calls. Uh, and Constify, finally, it's a, it's a GCC plugin, uh, 
which purpose is to making uh, structures containing only uh, function pointers const, uh, preventing an attacker to overwrite uh, function pointers in there and use it as a pivot. About Debian, uh, well, I don't think I really need to present Debian. Uh, it's well known distribution, uh, community driven, maintained by volunteers. Uh, it's sometimes a bit conservative, but not always. Uh, and it's uh, a great place to, uh, to hack because there, is, there are a lot of derivatives. So if you do something in Debian, you know it will be used by Debian uh, users and also by other users. Uh, so why why doing this? Uh, the point of all the introduction was to illustrate some of the challenges we face. Uh, hardening, uh, kernel hardening in mainline is currently limited. Uh, hardware features help a little, but it's still limited. Uh, there are useful features uh, for defense in depth, like uh, SecComp, which, while targeted at user space, uh, really helps protecting the kernel. Uh, but major features right now use a, an external patch, which means it's really harder for end users to benefit them. Uh, quite often, people just use distribution kernels. Uh, it's also a problem for enterprises and large sites who can't really build their kernels. They don't want to lose support or stuff like that. So what we lack is a bit of a secure by default options uh, for, for interested people. Uh, and for instance, Jira security upstream is not interested in upstreaming things, uh, uh, at least the relevant features. Uh, they want to keep things under control and basically they see the um, whole security uh, as a global approach. So they want to keep everything in, under their control. So during the, 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 the wheezy days, which uh, Remains back uh, back in time few few years. Uh, mm, I was already working on this, and uh, my intentions were to include a, a Linux JRSec package in Debian, uh, so people would just uh, apt to get install the the kernel. It would be uh, it would have been easy. Uh, with the kernel is based on Suite Two, which is uh, which has long term support on kernel.org. Uh, and it's maintained on kernel docker by Benachings, which is also the, the Debian man, uh, kernel maintainer. Uh, Broadless Spangler, which is GR security upstream, also choose uh, 3.2 as a um, stable kernel. Uh, so it was man maintaining the patch for, uh, for 3.2 during all those years. So basically everything was nice, was nice about, uh, about those versions. Uh, so how I, how I did it? Uh, there is a, a, a Linux source package which was maintained in subversion. So it was version 3.2, uh, 3.2.0, with some patches on top, like current stable patch, so 3.2.68 uh, when I wrote the slides, uh, bug fixes, security fixes, uh, backports like uh, um, hardware support, and some Debian specific stuff. <laughs> Uh, the, the Debian kernel, especially 3.2, is heavily patched. Uh, the, the Linux source packages uh, also support uh, something called feature sets, uh, like for OpenVZ or RT. Uh, a feature set is a nice feature where you have an additional set of patches uh, on top of uh, everything else, uh, separate uh, options like configuration, uh, dependencies, uh, build dependencies, and you, you can generate separate binary packages uh, from the same source packages. So in my, in my case, it was a, it was a really, it was really fit uh, because the feature set features is really easy to, easy to use. Uh, and since I was adding a new patch, adding configuration options and needed to, differ, to generate a different uh, binary package because I didn't want to um, uh, provide a default Debian package, uh, well, default Linux Debian package uh, patch with GSEC because it, it was a bit invasive at that time. Uh, I didn't want to start uh, that hard. Uh, so I was able to generate a different binary package which 
wasn't forced to every new user, but was easy to, to find. Uh, so I started to maintain a stack of kill patches against the Linux source package, adding that feature set. Uh, there are references in, uh, at the end, so the, you'll be able to look at it. Uh, so the JRC, JRSEC patches uh, repository, repository, repository content uh, is displayed. Basically, there are two important patches, uh, the second one and uh, the third one. So, so the add JRSEC feature set defines the JRSEC security feature set and uh, zero 04 JRSEC security adds the JRSEC security patch itself. If we focus on uh, the add JRSEC feature set patch, uh, so it defines a new feature set, a feature set in the Linux uh, source package. It adds uh, general security specific kernel config like uh, UDRF and protect, etc. Uh, and it uh, configures a JR security patch, which is added later to be uh, added on the feature set. So in order to build a JR security kernel, uh, the point was one would just uh, get the Linux source package using standard Debian commands, uh, apply my patches, so you, ha you would have to, to get the patches, apply them against the source package, uh, regenerate control files, uh, so it's some Debian specific stuff, but uh, the point is uh, you will have, uh, you will add uh, the new binary packages, and then build the kernel. You have more details in the, in the readme inside the repository. So we, with that uh, working, I went to uh, the Debian BTS and reported a bug against the Linux package. Uh, so it's bug, bug uh, 605090 uh, against, the, against the Linux kernel. Uh, it was uh, patches were reviewed by Ben Hutchings and Bastian Blanc, who are the Debian kernel maintainers. Uh, and I had some reviews, I fixed some stuff, but basically uh, Bastian basically knocked the patches. Um, basically because it was too invasive uh, and there was no interest from a, a geosecurity security upstream in pushing Sting uh, mainline. Uh, so I maintained my patches, I, st I keep maintaining my patches uh, personally on my, on my own repository and published uh, AMD64 and x86 packages on my own Debian repository. Uh, it was indeed non-trivial because um, the Debian kernel is heavily patched and, so, and the GR security patch is supposed to apply against vanilla. Uh, so I had, I had to port the GR security uh, patch to the Debian kernel. Uh, so it's, it's a bit, uh, it was a bit hard. Um, so we'll see about it a, a bit later. So it, yeah, I, I kept doing this during the wizzy, uh, wizzy days. I'm still somehow trying, but uh, now Jesse is out. So J Jesse is Debian 8. Uh, for Jesse, uh, things are a bit different because uh, Jesse kernel is based on 3.16. Uh, which is end of life on kernel.org. Uh, Debian is still uh, supported uh, a bit longer than, than that, uh, but 3.16 is, is maintained maintain long term by a canonical kernel team for Ubuntu. So we can still use it in Debian for a, a longer time. Uh, but that means there are no GR security support for 3.16. Uh, there is a st second stable branch, but it's 3.14, which is also LTS on kernel.org. Uh, porting GR security 3.14 to, to uh, 3.16 kernel is obviously not possible. It's too large. Uh, and when you don't have access to internals in of GR security, uh, it's just not possible. So um, I needed a new plan. I started looking for alternatives uh, and found the Mempo project. Uh, you can find some details on, on the references. Uh, Mempo project is basically a, a derivative uh, whose main goal is uh, hardened privacy. I'm not sure how successful, uh, how successful they are. Uh, but uh, they are taking part in the uh, rep rep reproducible builds uh, attempts in Debian. And uh, they also attempt to build the kernel in a verifiable way. Uh, so that means deterministic and reproducible. And 
they also include GR security by default. So basically we were trying the same things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, same kernel build system is really, really complex. It's uh, a lot of wrappers, of wrappers, of wrappers, uh, eventually calling the make kpkg binary, which is a Debian specific uh, package, which is not maintained anymore and not the preferred way to build uh, uh, a Linux kernel in Debian. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but that uh, gave me an idea. Uh, I'm not sure everyone knows, but uh, the upstream Linux make files uh, include a dpkg target, which generates a Debian package from the current Linux uh, tree. Uh, there are also same, the same things for uh, other formats like uh, RPM, PKG. And, and with that target, we can just get kernel sources, from example, for, uh, from example for, from Git, uh, patch them with a, a relevant JR security patch, add specific config files, and just run make that PKG, and we'll have a Debian package. It's really, really easy enough, and so we can uh, just write a, a little shell script. Uh, which will do everything for you. So I started a new repository. Uh, so it's a completely different work from the feature set part. It only uses um, upstream uh, kernel.org work. Uh, and basically it's distribution independent, so everyone can, can use it. Uh, the repository contains various helper scripts, reference, con uh, reference config files, and a few patches, which were helpful, helpful uh, at that time. If we look uh, at the content, uh, so we have um, uh, a first script, getgrsec, which runs from a, a local git clone. Uh, it will fetch latest grsec patch, uh, creates a local branch uh, from the relevant version, and applies the patch. Uh, the second script, uh, so it's actually taken from the Debian Linux uh, source package, and it's a basically a, a cat for uh, k-config files. Uh, so it will merge uh, some config files uh, and generate a new one. Uh, I'm, using, I'm using it to, uh, to keep uh, GR security options uh, separated, uh, so it's, uh, it's easier to maintain. Uh, in configs, I keep uh, the various config files, so the Debian references, like uh, uh, for 314 on the x86, uh, uh, for 1.0 on AMD64. I have a file with generic hardening options, uh, which are not GR security related, uh, and the GR security specific options. Then I match them in with config script to produce a, a, a config file for the current build. Uh, patches are um, actually against the packaging scripts in the Linux kernel. Uh, it helps generating source packages uh, because make that PKG uh, generates a binary package, uh, which is usually what you want. But uh, in some cases, uh, it can be useful to have a, a source package as well. Uh, so there are patches which do which do that, and actually uh, they they have been merged in the first three kernel. Uh, but they they are useful when you want to maintain your own repository. Uh, it helps uh, managing, managing it. So in the end, it's really, really easy. Uh, you call getgrsec.sh uh, to fetch the patch and apply it. You regenerate uh, the config file if needed, if it didn't really change because it just, uh, you just refresh the GR security patch, uh, it's, it's useless. Uh, then you build the kernel and maybe you upload the, the kernel result to your repository or you just install the, the package. And you can do that every time uh, a GR security patch is released. Uh, it's just a matter of calling the script. Uh, so I, I started maintaining a build result in my repository, so for 3.14 and 4.1. Uh, but really, you, you don't need them, actually. It's, it's really easy to rebuild them yourself. And if you do that, uh, that also means you, uh, you have a really unique kernel uh, because one feature of GR security is something called the uh, run struct, uh, which is something like ASLR for uh, sensitive data structures in the kernel. Uh, so it basically tries to randomize them, and the randomization is uh, build specific. Uh, so if you build your own kernel, uh, you will have a different one from other people. 
Uh, unfortunately, there are still some issues. Uh, first, uh, GC has 3.16, no 3.14. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, but I can't do uh, much about it, but 3.14 works fine on GC. I, I'm running myself uh, 3.14 right now. Uh, you will lose some specific features. Uh, so your mileage might, uh, might, might vary. Oh, sorry. Uh, resulting packages obviously are not uh, suitable for Debian Arch Archive. Uh, I know, uh, it's right. Uh, so it's, it, it won't um, fit the, the, the initial goal, but in, it's still really easy to do, to do it. So I can't really integrate the binaries uh, in, in Debian, but I can publish the scripts and people, uh, especially in uh, Large, uh, large sites can just use them and rebuild their own kernel and maintain their own repository. It's really easy to do. <coughs> and it's also, it, wor it also works for other distributions. Uh, but the, the worst problem is that GR security for 314 is not available anymore. And for that, I really can't do uh, everything. So about GR security, uh, recently in mid mid September, uh, stable patches uh, 3.2 and 3.14 are not public anymore. I won't enter in the details, but they stopped publishing them for for the public. Uh, and only the test patch is available, which was uh, 417 uh, when I wrote this. So it's in the same. Um, uh, for Debian stable and not all stable, uh, so Wizzy and Jesse. Uh, I don't have a good solution right now. Uh, we can stay on the last published patches, uh, maybe try to port them to later kernels, but it will be hard. And it will keep getting uh, harder. Uh, we can also switch to uh, the test patches and hope uh, for one kernels and later will work fine on those distributions. Uh, in the, I, I don't think it's uh, really problematic to build uh, to use uh, more recent kernels in older distributions, uh, but you might have some surprises. And for Stretch, which is next uh, next Debian, uh, we we really need a more future-proof uh, solution. Uh, so res retrospectively, uh, maybe that's better that uh, inclusion in Debian was uh, refused uh, because I'm unsure how I will have dealt with that. Uh, if, we are, if, if I had a, a, a Linux GSEC package inside a stable right now. So, for, for the future, uh, I'm still uh, considering the, the, the plans, and I have two, well, there are two major, major plans. For the Debian integration, which I'm still interested in, uh, I will retry the feature set approach. Uh, with a separate source package, because the main point of uh, Bastian Blanc uh, at that time was that he that he didn't want to integrate uh, my patches in his kernel, basically. Uh, but he, if it's not uh, a patch against the current source package, well, he he doesn't care. Uh, so <coughs> one one thing which uh, which was uh, uh, a problem also was. Uh, uh, how, how would you support it in stable? Uh, there were some complaints from the security team, which I'm a member of, but there are some conflicts of interest, so I didn't, uh, I didn't talk about it. But basically, uh, if we have two Linux uh, source package in stable, that means double the work of our security team. Uh, so the point here is to only target uh, unstable and follow the test patches. Uh, and maybe provide backports. Uh, that's not really enough for end users and enterprise who, who use stable, but for now that's the best I can do. Uh, but really, uh, upstreaming relevant features uh, does look like the most future-proof approach, uh, especially with limited uh, availability of the patches. Uh, but that's something which, uh, which has traction because uh, uh, at the Linux Security Summit in Seattle, uh, it seems the subject uh, gained some traction. And for example, there is a hardened uh, kernel topic proposal for the kernel summit, which is later uh, in oct October or November, I guess. Uh, so uh, James Morris and Case Cook are really uh, 
pushing forward to this. So we'll see what happens. About Debian integration, uh, so why a new source package? Obviously, a uh, feature set was not enough. It's, uh, it's really uh, interesting, but it's not, well, it's still too invasive for the Linux source package. Uh, and patch porting was too time consuming, uh, especially for 3.2. So I need to basically minimize uh, the differences with Linux vanilla and maybe disable some Debian patches. So the point would be to provide uh, more vanilla uh, variants than uh, the usual uh, Debian kernel. Uh, one problem also was the timeline because uh, GR security upstream uh, doesn't follow exactly the kernel.org timeline. Uh, it takes some time to port the, the patch. Uh, so we really want to follow the GR security specific timeline, which is a bit delayed, uh, and not the kernel.org and Debian integration timeline. So it really uh, facilitates things if we don't have to, uh, if we don't have to follow the current uh, source, Debian source package. But I'd like to avoid uh, too much duplicate work because in the end it's still uh, a Linux uh, package. Uh, so I'm trying to reuse the Linux source package repository uh, where I'm dropping uh, everything non-relevant, uh, so other feature set, uh, generic, generic patches, uh, unsupported arch architectures, because mostly uh, GR Security supports uh, x86, uh, ARM, um, PC, um, but we have some very unknown architectures in Debian, like uh, S390 or stuff like that, which don't have any GR security support. So basically it's useless for us. Uh, so dropping everything non-relevant, but still keeping changes like configuration updates and maybe some specific patches useful for integration. Um, if it's too much work, then well, we'll try to fork just completely. Uh, so will it work this time? Uh, honestly, uh, I don't know. Uh, so don't hold your breath, uh, but you can keep using the the, GS, the get GSX script for now because that will work with the test patches. But there really seem to have uh, to be some momentum on this. Uh, I've been pinged by multiple people inside Debian recently. Uh, the, the Debian bugs I mentioned had, had some activity recently uh, from interested people. So. Basically, I'm trying to to cook uh, something uh, with a separate source package, and it's nearly ready to be uh, pushed somewhere for for review. And at that point, I will try to to make an upload to Debian Insable in the following weeks, I guess. So I'm a bit early, but I'm I'm done here. If you have any case questions, so I have some references uh, about. The repository uh, URLs and stuff like that. So, if you have any question. What about the person who would rewrite some part of the GSX and use it in the Yeah, so the, the question is about uh, uh, picking specific features from the GR security patch and pro push them upstream. Uh, actually, this is already uh, an effort uh, done mainly by uh, Case Cook, uh, which already pushed things as part of uh, the Yama LSM, uh, and is also pushing specific features. Uh, it's easier for um, small features, uh, more invasive features like uh, UDREF or uh, can exact it's it's a bit harder. Uh, there are also some some traction inside Debian, uh, for example, for the four uh, one five maybe uh, kernel inside Debian, Banachings actually extracted uh, the hardened path uh, bits in from their security. So I didn't mention it, but uh, there are some generic hardening features in GR security. One of them is a hardening of TUF subsystem uh, and following the, um, the vulnerabilities found in TUF uh, this summer, 
uh, benetchings uh, extra extracted uh, some specific big bits about perf hardening uh, from the GS security patch and included it in DBM. So it's a bit like my attempts, uh, but just on specific features. You described a few features in your security, the overlap of the kernels, uh, of mainline kernels. Is there any effort to uh, just to improve the old features from your security that are basically uh, mm, So the, the point is, um, the, the question is, uh, are there uh, overlapping uh, features in mainline kernel and GR security which are in the end removed from GR security? Uh, uh, the answer, I guess, is maybe. Uh, for example, uh, ISLR was included in the Linux kernel following uh, uh, years of uh, efforts, but uh, it's still not uh, completely feature uh, the, the same feature, so there are still modifications in in GR security, but I think there are some some features which have been removed from GR security because they are included in the in the Linux kernel. Uh, one thing also which are included in GR security, which we might not really want, is that um, uh, Broadless Spangler uh, actually tries to backport uh, security fixes from mainline and. Uh, uh, Linux Next and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes uh, things not specifically marked as uh, security sensitive and included in the GR security patch. So sometimes you already have uh, some security fixes, uh, for example, in the Debian kernel, which are uh, added also in the GR security. Uh, a lot, I guess. Uh, I'm not quite sure about uh, other distributions. Uh, so the question is about uh, overlapping efforts uh, between what I'm doing for Debian and other distributions. Uh, I'm, I don't know much about other distributions. Um, uh, what I know is about uh, Gen2 Gen Ardent and Arch, which are using, um, well, they are providing just security kernels. But I think uh, it's mostly about uh, uh, vanilla kernels, and I'm not sure. Well, for Gen 2, it's uh, obviously only uh, uh, source. Uh, maybe Arch provides uh, Debian, uh, excuse me, binary packages, uh, but I don't know much about it. And uh, it's actually, um, I guess, most about vanilla, mostly about vanilla pattern, kernels patched with GR security, uh, which might be the, the same attempt. Uh, but no, I'm, I don't know much about uh, other distributions. Yes. Uh, so the, the question is about um, constify plugin, plugin and uh, structures which have. Uh, a lot of function pointers and one field which is not a function pointer. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Well, uh, in in GR security, uh, at one time, um, uh, GR security were running a script against the Linux source package to make uh, to force everything uh, const. So there was a, a huge patch uh, just adding const to uh, relevant structures. Now it's done uh, with a um, uh, GCC plugin, but it's not valid for every structure. Uh, so there are still patch inside the, um, the kernel, uh, well, inside the, the GR security patch to uh, provide a, a no const attribute uh, for uh, structures which are not, uh, which can't be marked uh, const by the plugins. So it's, it's manual, but it's, there are like 100 of them, uh, if I remember well. So, uh, so the uh, question is about uh, could we detect uh, structures we could be marked uh, const uh, using the check patch uh, script before sub uh, submitting uh, patches to the kernel. Uh, 
maybe I'm I'm yeah maybe I'm not that uh, fluent in in check patch and not sure it would be uh, uh, really possible but yeah maybe. Uh, so the Debian kernel doesn't uh, enable uh, IOMMU MMU by default. Uh, I think uh, for the uh, uh, for my configs uh, using the get GSX script uh, in the hardening part, uh, I think I'm en enabling uh, IOMMU by default. Uh, unfortunately, uh, IOMMU are really buggy. Uh, I'm running with IOMMU enabled uh, since five or six years, and uh, so I'm only running uh, Intel, uh, uh, basically on Intel laptops. And uh, every time you try to enable uh, IOMMU, so with the Intel underscore IOMMU equal on uh, uh, command line arguments, um, what happens is uh, you have a lot of um, graphics bugs because uh, the GPU part, the embedded GPU part, uh, also has a, an IOMMU uh, which doesn't cope well with uh, when you enable IOMMU on a standard box, so when you're not using virtualization. Um, and you, you re every time you have a bug like this and you report it to Intel uh, engineers, uh, they, they say, yeah, we know uh, on current uh, Intel generation, uh, IOMMU is buggy, but it will be better in the next generation. Yeah, it could be, well, actually, uh, it's the only way I know to, to run, to enable the IOMMU is to uh, activate it and, uh, and disable the graphic part. Uh, I'm not sure you can do that uh, in the config file. Okay. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, uh, I, I didn't uh, talk. Well. Uh, Just security is uh, a, a lot of um, effort is. Mm, is done to harden uh, user space and kernel space uh, barriers, uh, but it's not the only uh, user is not the only uh, source of attacks. And, and as part of my work, I'm really interested in uh, physical or like physical uh, attacks, uh, for example, from the platform. Uh, PCI Express devices and stuff like that. And yes, uh, uh, I really think uh, there are a lot of things to be found uh, there. So enabling uh, IOMMU is definitely a good idea. Yeah, so the, the question is about uh, asking GS security upstream to provide uh, uh, the patches for the stable patches. Uh, so I didn't enter into details, but uh, what happened uh, early in September is that uh, GS security stopped providing uh, stable patches to the public. Uh, he Redless uh, still maintains them, both, uh, both branches, but uh, they are only available to sponsors. So basically, uh, it was a uh, licensing problem and tra trademark problem, and he, he, he just stopped uh, providing the patches uh, for free. But if you are a sponsor, which starts at like a um, few hundred bucks at, uh, per month, uh, you can have access to the, to the patches. But it's definitely not possible for distributions. But if you want to use uh, GR security in a stable 
uh, kernel, you can do it, and it's, it's not that expensive considering the, the work done, but yeah, it's not, uh, it's not free. I uh, so uh, question is uh, is it worth uh, continuing working on on feature set uh, inside uh, the uh, source Debian package uh, versus just going with uh, the get GRSec and make the PKG uh, way? Uh, I think both approaches are valid uh, because. Uh, as I, as I said, uh, the binaries generated by get GRSec, well, make dep kg, uh, well, are not really fitable for inclusion in the Debian archive, which is something I'm interested in. Uh, so I still think, think it, it. Uh, actually, all the, 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 the source part is not handled yeah, like a regular Debian package. So it's. It's not something we can, which can be easily uh, rebuilt by uh, uh, a build daemon in the Debian architecture. So there might be some uh, stuff to look at, but in the end, uh, adding um, more Debianization to the make the PKG way uh, would be, I think, a lot of work, which is already done in the Linux source package. Yes, but I think it might be easier to just strip the complexity from the Linux package, the, the source package, and, and just keep the relevant parts and benefit from the, the work done by Bennett Shings and Baston Blanc, for example, for configuration and specific patches and stuff like that. So, thank you for your attention.